The French Revolution has always been a fascinating period of history for me. From the storming of the Bastille in 1789, through to the capture and execution of King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette in 1793, to ultimately Napoleon Bonaparte's rise to power in 1799, the revolution marked the decline of absolute monarchy in Europe. For those who aren't familiar with the term, an absolute monarchy is where the ruling monarch has complete control and is considered above the law. But we're not here for an in-depth history lesson, we're here for a video game review. The game we're looking at today is Banner of the Maid, a tactical strategy role-playing game from Chinese developers Azure Flame Studio and published by CE Asia. A majority of the footage for this review was taken from the beta release of the English translation and I'm going to apologise in advance as there's going to be a few French names and terms and I'll probably butcher the pronunciations of them horribly, despite all the help I've received. The official release polishes the game by adding another difficulty level for players wanting to enjoy the story, as well as subtitles for voices and a few other things. In Banner of the Maid you play as a young woman named Pauline Bonaparte, the younger sister of Napoleon Bonaparte. Pauline, unlike her real life counterpart, is a rising military commander establishing herself in France. Pauline is also a maid, a woman with special powers that can turn the tides of battle, and in her case she has the ability to inspire her troops. However she is filled with self-doubt after a battle she ultimately won at the cost of a lot of her soldiers prior to the events of the game. After establishing herself during the Siege of Toulon where the French forces captured a hill as a key strategic point to attack the harbour and force the British and Spanish to retreat, Pauline is sent to Paris where she meets Josephine, the woman who would historically become Empress when Napoleon rises to power. Josephine is head of the Malmaisons, one of the factions vying for power in Paris, and Pauline will complete quests for the Malmaisons to benefit and gain favour with the other factions, with her choices and actions through the game affecting the Malmaisons standing in Paris. The game is set in an alternate timeline of revolutionary France during the year 1796. This would account for some of the events in the game such as Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette still being alive, they both got executed in 1793, and Maximilien Robespierre. The head of the Jacobins, another faction in the game, also being alive. He was executed a year later in 1794. But is the game any good? Find out in... The Good. As someone who enjoys history, despite being set in an alternate timeline of the French Revolution, which the game will explain as you play it, they're pretty on point with a lot of the characters. Little things such as Louis XVI's interest in locksmithing, Napoleon and his family being Corsican as opposed to being French, and Josephine's love of roses were noted in either the main story or in side stories.
The Bad. I know I mentioned earlier that Pauline's choices and actions will affect the male maids in standing in Paris, but I feel that those choices don't really mean much in the long run. Sure, increasing your standing with the factions will unlock better weapons and items, but in the main story it felt like it didn't make a difference, and even in the side quests I didn't really notice the consequences of my actions. The different factions still interacted with one another somewhat indifferently, and I thought it might have made the game better if, let's say, supporting the Royalists too much would result in missions sabotaging the Jacobins, or even putting you at odds with Robespierre and Napoleon, and changing the course of the story. I've also never been a big fan of late recruitment in a game, and the character I'm thinking of fits the bill very well. Throughout the game, your choices and actions will affect whether they join you or not, and if you do it right, they join. On the third to last mission. Another character who played a minor role early in the game is put out of commission for a large portion of the game, and he only becomes available near the end as well. The only recruitable character I'm not too fussed about with this is Napoleon. The game's main focus is on his sister, and Napoleon was campaigning in other parts of Italy and Egypt for a lot of the game. Other than that, I can't think of much else, so I think it's time for... The Opinion I really enjoyed my time with this game. I feel there's a lot of potential to be explored with Chinese, Taiwanese and Hong Kong developers, and I'm really glad that a game like this is seeing an English release so people outside of Asia can play it too, myself included. Banner of the Maid is a solid tactical strategy RPG, and I found the difficulty to be quite fair so long as you've prepared properly. The little tidbits of historical information and the gameplay really made the game for me, though I would have liked it if there was more weight behind my choices and actions. If you like tactical strategy games like Fire Emblem and Langrisser, then this is worth checking out. If you like the French setting, then definitely give Jean d'Arc on the PlayStation Portable a go. The game's fairly overlooked for a level 5 game, and is a great game in its own right, much like this one. So with that, it's time for my rating. I would give Banner of the Maid, The Chateau de Malmaison out of 10. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review. If you enjoyed today's review, feel free to check out some of our other videos and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram and our Facebook page. Once again, thank you for watching.